Ever wondered how to highlight, animate and control individual words in After Effects with just one slider? Well, today I'm going to show you a super powerful trick that makes word selection, styling and animation faster, cleaner and way more fun. From creating smooth text reveals to syncing multiple layers, adding gradients, spacing and even complete control with just a few sliders, this tutorial will level up your text animations like never before. Alright, let's jump right in and open After Effects, then create a new composition. I'm calling mine Text Selector, and I'm using a full HD resolution with a frame rate of 30. The first step is to create a text layer, so go to the Tools panel and select the Text tool. For this example, I'm using the Poppins font, but you can choose any font that works best for you. Click on the screen and type your text. Once your text is on the screen, grab the Move tool and carefully align it right into the center. Now let's add some animation. Open the text layer, go to the animate option and select position. I will set the position value around 180. After that, click on add, go to property and choose scale. For the scale value, set it to 0%. The animation setup starts from here, so make sure you are on the first frame of the timeline. Expand the range selector and change the offset value to minus 100. Add a keyframe at this point, then move to the 1 second mark and change the offset value to 100%. Previewing it now will show the animation, but it still looks a little rough and not as smooth as we want. To fix this, open the Advanced section. Change the Based On setting from Characters to Words. This instantly improves the way the text animates. As a final step, adjust the shape and select Ramp Up. With that, the animation becomes much smoother and looks polished. Great, now let's add some ease high and ease low to the animation so that it feels much smoother and more natural. This simple adjustment makes a big difference and I really like how it looks now. Let's rename this setup as the main animation so that we can keep things organized. Next, click on animate once again and this time choose opacity. I will name this new animator selector. Open the range selector, then expand the advanced options. Change the unit setting to index, and also switch the based on option to words. Everything else will remain the same except for the opacity value. Keep the opacity around 30% for now so the text is still visible, and later we will reduce it to 0% when needed. Now let's test how the selection works. By simply changing the end value to 1, you can see that the first word in the line gets selected. Since we applied the opacity setting, only that first word becomes semi-transparent while all other words remain visible. If you want to highlight or hide a different word, you just adjust the start and end values to select it. But instead of manually changing these values every time, we can make it easier by using offset. To do this, set the start value to zero and the end value to one, which means only one word is selected at a time. Now, by moving the offset slider, you can cycle through the words without adjusting start and end again and again. Let's keep the offset set to 2 for demonstration. Finally, change the opacity value from 30% to 0% so that whichever word is selected will be completely hidden. Great! Now we can move our focus to the second word. Start by selecting the text layer that we created earlier and make a duplicate of it. To stay organized, let's rename the bottom layer as main text and the duplicate, which is the top one, as italic text. You are always free to experiment with your own creative design choices, but for this demonstration, I will use a simple approach. Open the italic text layer, go inside the selector options. Once you are there, expand the advanced settings and change the mode to subtract. By doing this, the italic text layer will only affect the parts of the text that are not being selected by the main text layer, while all the other words remain hidden. This allows us to highlight one section of the text while keeping the rest in place. Next, let's add some styling. I will change the font of the italic text layer to something different. I am choosing Lobster, but you can select any font you prefer. Now the animation looks more interesting with two contrasting styles. To make it look even better, we can add a gradient. Right-click on the italic text layer, go to Layer Style, and choose Gradient Overlay. Open Gradient Overlay, then click on Edit Gradient and select any gradient colors you like. I am keeping a simple color combination for now. After applying, minimize the effect panel so the workspace looks cleaner. Now we need a single control system for selecting words. 
Instead of changing the start, end or offset values individually on each text layer, we can manage everything through one controller layer. For this, create a new null object and rename it Controller. Go to the Effects and Presets panel, search for Slider Control and apply it to this null object. Rename the slider to select Word. Lastly, make sure to lock the effect controller by clicking on the lock icon, which ensures it stays fixed on screen even when you are selecting other layers. Perfect, now let's continue with the italic text layer. Open the italic text, then expand the text options, and inside that open the selector. Within the range selector, we are going to connect the offset value to the select word slider. To do this, hold down the Alt key on Windows or the Option key on Mac, and then click on the stopwatch icon next to offset. This will enable expressions. If you have the parent and link tab open, you can also use the pick whip tool to directly link the offset to the select word slider by dragging and dropping it. Once done, now repeat the same process with the main text layer. Open the text options, go to selector, then into range selector, and again link the offset with the select word slider. Now both layers are connected to the same controller, so you can simply select different words by changing the slider values on your keyboard which makes the process much faster and easier. Everything is working fine, but you might notice that some words are overlapping or partially selected, which does not look correct. To fix this, we need to add a simple expression that forces the slider values to round to whole numbers. This ensures the selection snaps to exact words rather than in between areas. Select the italic text layer, press EE quickly to open expressions, and in the offset expression type, math.round, with the existing script placed inside the parentheses. Copy this same expression, go to the main text layer and paste it into the offset expression field. Now both layers use the same rounded values and the selection works perfectly without overlaps. Everything is working fine, but to make the setup more organized, we should add a few more controllers. First, minimize all the text layers so the timeline looks cleaner. Now, add a new slider control to the controller layer and rename it Position X. Duplicate this slider and rename the copy position Y. These will control the horizontal and vertical movement of the italic text. Next, select your italic text layer and press P to open the position property. Right-click on position and choose separate dimensions, which will split it into individual X and Y values. Now link the X position of the italic text to the position X slider using the pick whip. Do the same with the Y position linking it to the position Y slider. This way you can easily adjust the placement using just the sliders. Remember, these position controls are only for the italic text, not for the bottom layer. At this point, you may notice the text is not visible because the default slider value is set to zero. Simply increase the values until the text is aligned at the desired location on the screen. Once that is set, add another slider control to the controller and rename it Scale. Select the italic text, press S to open the scale property and link it with this new scale slider. Now adjust the slider value to 100% so the text size looks normal. With these controllers, you can now easily manage both the size and position of the italic text. Play back the animation and you will see everything working efficiently. If you select another text, you may notice some overlapping between words, but this can be quickly fixed by adjusting the position X and Y sliders. Let's add another slider to make our setup more flexible, this time for controlling the spacing between words, because in some cases the words may appear too close together, and small gaps can be distracting. I'll call this new control spacing. Instead of applying the effect to the italic text, we'll apply it to the main text layer. So, open your main text layer, then in the selector click on Add, Go to Property and choose Tracking. Now parent the tracking amount to the spacing slider. Once that's linked, you can simply adjust the slider to increase or decrease the gap between words as needed. Minimize the layers to keep everything tidy, then test it out. I'll set the spacing to a moderate value just for demonstration, and as you can see, the spaces between words look much better now, while the animation and controls are still working perfectly. The setup is smooth and responsive. Now we need to do one more important step to make this workflow easier. Select the main text layer and open it, then do the same with the italic text layer. In both, locate the source text property. 
Once you've found it, grab the pick whip from the source text of the main text layer and connect it to the source text of the italic text layer. You might ask, what does this actually do? By linking the source text properties, whenever you change the text in the italic text layer, the main text layer will automatically update to match. This way you can replace or edit the text in one place and both layers stay in sync without needing extra manual adjustments. Thank you for watching, I'll see you in the next tutorial and until then, good luck and peace.